Welcome to part one of my custom Corvette headlight build. I'm going to be taking you guys through the design process for these custom one-off headlights that I'm building for this car. For those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the C5 Corvette, this car originally came with halogen pop-up headlights and these headlights were horrible. So I upgraded to some non-pop-up headlights that had halogen projectors in them. They used to be made by a company called Spectreworks. Now, these things actually weren't much better. They were still pretty horrible. I went through two iterations trying to improve these things. First, I put HID bulbs in the halogen projectors, which was a little bit of an improvement. And then I switched over and did a retrofit, putting Morimoto by Xenon projectors into these housings. This also improved things a little bit more, but I want to take things one step further and I want to do a full custom setup inside these headlight housings. So normally I start all of my projects off with hand-drawn sketches and this project was no different. I used hand-drawn sketches to get a general idea of what I wanted to build. And now I'm not going to show you guys those sketches because it's not really necessary. After I sketch things, I typically move those designs into SolidWorks or some other 3D modeling program so that I can get a better idea of what I'm designing in three dimensions. Now on this project, what you'll see in front of you in SolidWorks is an actual picture of the empty housing that I'm working within. And you'll notice a red vertical line here. And that line is a known dimension. So what I did was I just measured between two points on the empty housing, took a picture, imported it into SolidWorks, and you'll see that it's just on a, on a flat plane. And I was able to scale the picture with that known dimension. So now what I can do is I can design inside of this housing without even having to measure any more of it. And it actually turns out to be quite accurate. It was a little surprised by this. And so now what I'll do is I'll unsuppress the base plate as I like to call it for this headlight project and this is the plate of which everything gets bolted to and so this is sort of the structural member of the the headlight kit here and this is the plate that will tilt up and down in order to aim the headlights up and down in the final assembly now you'll notice that I have holes already built in and it looks like I kind of have things figured out at this point which I do, I have everything designed. So when you design something like this and you have multiple components, I normally have to design things concurrently. So everything's being designed at the same time. You can't really just design one thing and finalize it and move on to the next. And so I'm gonna be showing you guys all the main components, but keep in mind that I had to go through many iterations of moving holes around and changing the size of things in order to get everything to fit together properly. So this is the base plate and it's just essentially a two-dimensional plate. You'll see that it does have some depth, um, but it's a two-dimensional plate that everything will bolt to. And so the next major component on the list is this carbon fiber looking piece. And I like to call this maybe a shroud and it serves no actual functional purpose in this assembly other than to just basically look good. So, I mean, I guess its purpose is just for aesthetics. It hides the base plate on the bottom so you won't see that through the headlight lens, and I guess it hides some, some of the guts of the, uh, the wiring and stuff at the back. And this piece here I plan on making out of uh, a 3D printed part first of all. And then after the 3D printed part is printed, I'm going to laminate or wrap it in real carbon fiber. And this is of course using epoxy resin. And it's gonna provide it with some structural rigidity, and it's gonna prevent it from melting uh, under the heat of the actual bi-xenon headlight that I plan on using. The plastic that I'm going to be using for the 3D printing process is just regular PLA and it has a rather low melting temperature and so like I said my concern is that it might warp or melt uh, with the heat of the headlight being so close to it. So the carbon fiber is going to protect that and of course look good and match all of my other carbon fiber trim on the car. So this piece here it just sits on top of the base plate as you can see, it follows the contour of the base plate and it should fit inside the headlight housing as long as that original picture I showed you guys was accurate. On the back side, it's just a flat surface that we can bolt more things to. Other than that, I just tried to keep in mind while designing this piece that I am going to be wrapping it in carbon fiber so the contours can't be too crazy 
it has to be something that will lend itself well to, uh, to a cloth that has to wrap over the surfaces. Okay, so I brought in the next part here, and this is what is gonna support the LED cluster as well as the bi-xenon projector. So I have it highlighted here, and you can see that it's just a simple bracket. I was trying to keep everything in this design very simple, easy to manufacture, stuff that I should be able to bend myself uh, and just get laser cut or water jet cut locally. So there you have it. Like I said, just a simple 90 degree bracket. Again, I have all the holes and everything figured out for mounting at this point because I have this design. I had to design all the parts at the same time, like I mentioned earlier. And so you can see that it just takes three bolts right there through that main base plate and I have them slotted. And I've done this just in case my measurements were off a little bit. I should be able to twist this bracket uh, and rotate it a little bit to aim the, the actual bi-xenon headlight a little bit better if my measurements were off a little bit. So that's that part there, really simple. And so moving on, we have the next part, which is the LED cluster, which was just highlighted in blue. And this is another 3D printed part in this assembly. And its purpose is to hold six individual Eagle Eye LED lights. And now these LED lights I've used before in a few other projects, and they work great as daytime running lights. And so that's what I'm gonna be using them for here. The Corvette already has turn signals located uh, in the bottom of the bumper, and so I don't need to integrate turn signals into this headlight. So this is a great opportunity to really customize the headlight, and I really wanna use something um, like these Eagle Eye LED lights where I can program them. I've done this before in one of my other projects, and you can find the link to that video. I'll post that up in the description, and you'll see a little pop-up on the bottom of the screen here if you wanna check out how I do that. I'm gonna be doing something really similar, or at least I plan to for this project. And so those LED lights are gonna be, like I said, located in these six pockets. And I'm gonna be able to sequence them. I'm gonna do a, a custom um, programmable sequencing. Every time the car starts up, it's gonna run through this uh, sequence. And it's just gonna give the headlights another cool custom effect. Okay, and finally, I'm gonna bring up the actual projector itself, which is right here. And this is a Vivo series projector. And if you haven't heard of them before, it's probably because the company I think is out of business. I tried to find them again recently, but I couldn't find them online. And I actually purchased this light probably a good year ago. And you can see how long it's taken me to finally get around to this project. But the great thing about this is that the guy who used to make these, he would make the shroud out of a single piece of billet aluminum. Now the projector behind it is probably just some kind of generic Morimoto H1 projector, which the performance is just fine. I've used those in a lot of other projects as well. But the great thing, like I said, is this super awesome looking billet aluminum shroud over the front of the projector. And the guy would go even an extra mile and he'd laser engrave any kind of script you wanted on the front face of the actual projector shroud. And so I had him engrave uh, Corvette Performance Optics on the front, and you see I've done that also in the CAD model here. And so my actual projectors say that as well, which is a really nice one-off touch. So I brought in each of the models for the LED daytime running lights, and this just gives you a pretty good general idea of what it's gonna look like when it's finished and what I'm shooting for for a final product. On the back, you can see that there is some unused space, and Right now it looks unused in the model, but in real life I'm going to need some room for the HID ballast and I'm going to need some room for all of the wires and connectors and that sort of thing. And it's perfect back here because it's just hidden out of view when this thing's installed. Remember, there's going to be a lens that goes over top of this and with the old headlight, the lens was painted so you couldn't see past a certain point. And that's going to work well for this system. Now, in the next video, I'm going to basically take you guys through how I'm building each of these parts and how they're all gonna go together. And hopefully in one video, I can cover the entire build. So keep an eye out for the next video. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe and keep an eye out for part two.